me married was something all pressing issues, na violence against women, and this like kind of something. So, um, we were working on a video clip, Lomi Pla, um, about violence against women. So, come Lomi Pla, at least I really want to have you guys in this video with us, because I think it's just going to paint such a strong picture with, you know, men being supportive with, um, you know, advocating about violence against women. So, no have plan to talk to us next week. Thank you so much. Like you, Pla. Let me just, let me play It's called No More. I think a few of you have, um, have heard it. I'm not so sure. Um, this new version of No More that I've done is, um, we feature one play artist here in Australia, one play indigenous artist. So I'm, I'm been come, I'm been come here to PNG. I've been um, feature, feature lo sing sing too. So I hope you guys like the song. This song is very, very special to me, and I'm sure I speak on behalf of ladies. I get so emotional. Sorry, so emotional when I hear this song. Um, so the, the story behind this song, right? Um, but last year, two years ago. Yeah, last year. Okay, last year. Um, one of the best people me been die from being in a very violent relationship. And so I wrote this song for her and um, just all the women going through violence. So it's such a special song for us women. And I'm, I'm just so happy that we get to have you guys support, you know, because you guys are just setting that example for men out there to, you know, really step up and appreciate women, respect them all, you know, so. Um, all Papa blow me away. All prata you plast away, bung him han, sun up strong, talk no god, more violence, no more bagger up in mama, no more bagger up in susa, bung him han, strong, talk no Thank you. It's a new way and the old protective customs for women, for children, for men, those protective customs have broken down. And the legal system that has come in has not filled the gap as yet. The absorption of a new legal system and new ways. Um, I, in my early years here, I observed what I call, I'm calling protective customs that protected women from violence. And I will say in my early years here, I rarely saw violence against women. And if it, was, if it did happen, it was intervened with very quickly by various just accepted protocols of behavior that people, there were the protectors and so on. So that's the first thing I, I always try to say. I don't want our children and our grandchildren to believe that what they're seeing today is their ancestors' way because it really is not. You know, so, um, but it is with us now, like it is with every society around the world, as a result of all sorts of tensions, and so we have to really tackle it, uh, and uh, you know, and work on um, behavioural change interventions that make up for those lost protocols that, that protected people. Um, yes, there was violence in Papua New Guinea traditionally. I'm not trying to pretend there wasn't, but the type of violence we're seeing now with the within the Family, and a family of course is not a man and a wife and children. But now often family might be man, wife and children and there's not that extended family that would have perhaps intervened. And even nowadays I'm seeing where extended family often don't intervene in the way it would happen. The ones who are the protectors are not around. So, you know, we have a challenge that we're facing and I believe that the only way to work on it is intensive community development work, working within communities. Very little focus has truly been given to integral human development, to equality and participation, to all of those um, principles in our constitution. And I think it's time that we go back to basics and really look at that beautiful document uh, and see how it relates to what is happening now. No more, as is said in our national constitution, in the preamble, it states very clearly, we reject violence and seek consensus as a means of solving our common problems. Guinea Guada Foundation Incorporated runs the uh, Mary Safe buses. 
Uh, there's four of them currently on the road at the moment. Uh, they uh, go around the city, various areas, and pick up ladies from the market and drop them off. Uh, but uh, it started with Guinea Guada many years ago. Uh, the previous uh, foundation manager, Pastor Mike Field, and he was going to work one day and uh, he lives in Gerahu, right over the back of the market. And uh, he noticed that um, a lot of the women standing around the bus stop couldn't get on the bus simply because the men were pushing their way in and uh, the uh, jumping through the windows, like here at the back windows of the bus that were open. They were jumping in so there was no way the women could in, get in. So he, um, he had a talk uh, with the, the board chairman about it and uh, they, he suggested to speak to uh, the governor because he had got some buses from overseas for running around the NCDC. Uh, from that they got, they were given, donated several buses of which out of the three or four buses they, they got, they managed to get one on the road uh, fixed up and that was the, uh, it was called the Merry Safe Bus uh, 1. We, we found that uh, uh, like just last year, uh, with our four, three buses we had last year until this one come, but in that three buses we carried over 236,000 women and children for the year. Uh, Pauline, the driver of this bus, uh, when she was at school, was a, a, a victim possibly once, uh, twice, three times a month where they'd steal her bag and uh, bill them and what have you when she was going to school. We believe in giving a service, especially for the women and children and young girls, um, to get them where they want to go safely and in one piece. You travel with waves. You've come a long way. You've traveled with grace, and your spirit is protected by a queen. Because of her right, because of her fight, we will carry on into the light, behind and below, above and beyond, her legacy will carry on. I know that it's hard, I know that it's tough, but you got this, it's all in your blood. Since it's such a male-dominated industry, I'm going to try and have bring more females yes. out. So that's how I went into the whole girl power project, and yeah. I wanted to start this whole girl, full girl band um, project, and then it, it's... It's worked out really well so far. We went on tour and everything, but it's it was just a real struggle. Like, just the I think it just starts off with the whole mentality of our people. Yeah, um, is like, that like a cultural. Thing? Yeah, it is a cultural thing. We more or less try to look at the issues that are affecting the lives of the people, and we try as much as possible to work towards addressing those issues. And for this sake, uh, we have been closely working together with uh, CPP, 
and with the Law Reform Commission and the Community Development, uh, working on gender issues. Recently, we were engaged in the social accusation related violences with Law Reform Commission, and we have uh, come up with some strategies for churches to work on uh, in a two way eradication of the uh, social accusation related violences. But when we look at uh, the gender violence uh, issue itself, for clear thinking people, they would agree that categorization of people into gender categories and physical characteristics have no biological basis. So to categorize men from women and boys uh, from girls is a prejudiced gender superiority, which is a clear result of irrational and hostile behaviors to which opposite sexes express through physical violence, through negative ideas and negative opinions. And these actions are based on false knowledge of gender superiority. They are based on our mentality and our power structures. Gender inequality and more especially gender violence must be declared by the churches as sin because gender violence denies the very source of human humanity who was created in God, God's very image. So to destroy or to violate God's likeness in the other sex is an act of denial, repudiating God the creator who declared his creation as good. All human beings, regardless of gender, must be seen as living icons of God, worthy of respect and worthy of dignity. The violation of this is a direct insult of God, the creator, and therefore is seen by the churches as an act of sin. And uh, we must acknowledge the involvement of, the, uh, of CPP in coming up with the with the uh, theology of gender equality. And this particular gender equality stands on those 10 principles that try to uh, respect uh, women as, as people who have been equally created by God with men. So all churches and Christians are called to one mission, mission business, not as usual anymore. We should not be engaging in usual businesses anymore. But we should, we must look at transformative justice seriously and change direction the way we have been uh, passively dealing with violence in our homes and communities and move forward uh, and move forward with commitment to restorative justice of life as God meant it to be. A life in its wholeness where peace for all must prevail and that is what we always refer to as good plus down in Pigeon. Having said what I have said on, on gender violence, especially on violence against women, I now represent all the churches, all the men of faith in the nation, even boys of faith in the nation, in calling to the entire nation of Papua New Guinea, men and women, that a men and boys, that there should, shouldn't be any more violence, no more violence on women and girls. Let me repeat that, no more violence on women and girls.
It's all in your blood 